Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! The other day I got an invite to go out to the town of Mirror, Alberta. And it's taken me a few days to be able to find the time to get away from the shop. It's been very busy this past week. We are going to um, a small town out kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, they do have a secondhand store. Now the owner of the secondhand store has passed away, sadly. Um, but he was an interesting fellow. He was also a uh, indigenous Cree chief and uh, had a love for buying and selling old things. So we're gonna go out there and meet with one of his family members, see if maybe there's some cool stuff to buy, and visit a town that I've never seen before in my life. So let's see where the road takes us today. I was sent several photographs from this property and at first glance, it didn't really look like a whole lot. There was a lot of secondhand sort of items like, you know, old clothing and knickknacks and things that really aren't going to work in my store. But as I look closer at the photos, I saw, well, maybe there's some old comic books and maybe there's some old war medals in the case. And, you know, sometimes you just have to take a risk and go out and have a look. So although at first glance, it doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot for me, I am feeling confident there's enough quantity that maybe there's a few items in there we can fill up the back of the vehicle and hopefully still turn a good profit. Okay guys, I'm having some mechanical difficulty. My car keeps stalling. It feels like it's starving of fuel. Um, this car has two fuel pumps and I think the secondary pump that you use for highway use is kick the bucket. I am trying to limp my way into the next town, which is just a couple kilometers away, and really hope that I can get this thing uh, back on the road. It's also starting to rain, and I don't want to get soaking wet. Okay, barely made it here, made it into a shop. Um, there's nobody here though. <laughs> I'm trying to get the attention of one of the mechanics inside and see if they can have a look at my car. Hopefully I'm not going to be stuck here overnight or anything. Okay, good news. Uh, they're going to pull the car in. We're going to have a look at it. Hopefully uh, the town I'm in of Camrose, they'll have an electric inline fuel pump. I kind of self-diagnose. I don't know if that's what it actually is, but I think that's what it is. So we're going to get them to pull the car in and hopefully uh, get this on the road again. So that is the old pump. That's the old pump. And Ooh. what happened was, oh yeah, it's probably got lots of old ga gas. The wire. In. The wire came right off of it. Well, it just, yeah, the wire was broke. Okay. And, um. So that was that. So we got a new pump. We just have to get the uh, fittings for it and then uh, we'll be back yeah. in business. You betcha. Okay, it's been three hours, but in that time, uh, not only did we get the car back on the road, thankfully, um, we got an oil change done on it because that was overdue. So I had a little bit of maintenance done on the car and I'm back on the highway now. Um, luckily the guy's been waiting around for me, so we'll still be able to get this pick done. I was a little bit nervous there for a bit, but <laughs> we're back on track. Well, that was an adventure to find this town, but we're finally here. Hello! So where I am right now is a former CN Railway bunkhouse. And what a bunkhouse is, is a place for the guys to basically um, grab a place to sleep 
when they're switching over from trains and switching jobs. This has been converted into a spot for this gentleman to have stored just piles and years of collectibles and every single room is packed. Now, I've been given essentially free reign to walk around and see what I can see and build a pile. Some areas have lights and some don't, but there is stuff um, everywhere. And I really have a feeling that I'm gonna find a lot of stuff today. So this could be a good pick. Every space has something and the family needs to liquidate. They need to sell. They go through even, you know, old song books and boxes. This is gonna be quite an adventure, guys. I can tell already. Let's do a little reconnaissance here and see. Although Joe, the fellow who passed away here, was uh, chief of this area, he was born in Germany and uh, married an indigenous lady and was elected as chief. And so uh, as a result of his fascination and interest, there's lots of really cool artifacts that are around, some of which are not for sale, some of which are. We'll keep uh, digging. It's mainly the um, toys and collectibles and there's some artifacts. Dinosaur egg. Hmm. Fossils. Interesting carved bowls and so forth. The front area, which is what was intended to be the actual store. And we'll work our way back. Okay. Some of this is Halloween decorations. Even early Halloween stuff can be collectible, but a lot of this looks a little bit on the newer side. So we've got a whole room just of decorations. I have a friend with that same nose and mustache. He doesn't need the disguise. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a replica cast iron piggy bank. It helps that some of the stuff is priced. So when I go to actually make a purchase, we'll have a reference point of what they originally wanted. Comics. Oh, some old ones in here. 20 cents. You never know when there's going to be a good early Spider-Man or something. Unlikely. If the guy's a collector, you'd think he would have put it somewhere else, but... Conan. Okay, I'm going to come back to that box in a bit. I just have to take it all in right now because there's so much to look at. There's records. There's toys, there's plastic model kits. That's kind of neat. It's too bad it's had some water damage. It's a 1980s kit. He had it priced really high, but I have a feeling we'll get it for much, much, much lower. It's still in the plastic though. Old model kits are quite collectible, so I'll probably grab a few of these guys down and see one already up there. George Barris T-Buggy. MPC kit. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna check. Oh, there's, boy, it's not like I don't have enough cameras already, but that's kind of a neat Polaroid. 30, 35 mil. Boy, he had a high price on that guy. 350. Mm, not likely. But there's a, another model kit. I used to have one of these. I had a 633 CSI for a while. It was a cool car. Oh, there's a few old cameras up there. Do I need more cameras? Mm, no, but that probably won't stop me from buying it. I'm trying to think about the psychology here because if I had my till set up where he has his right here, I would have kept the good stuff kind of close to me. So I'm gonna look kind of in this back area here. Yeah, there's a Lionel train. Little steam toys. More trains. Okay, yeah, some cool stuff. I'll bring it around. It looks like a tin plate train, that's neat. These are the matching cars that go with that Lionel train engine I found. And that is a, I believe it was called the General, which is a kind of an 1800s looking set. But you know, it's not a complete but it's nice to have a few pieces for it. And we've got some die cast cars. Oh, here's something cool. It's a GI Joe headquarters and it's still in the box. It's still sealed in the box too. That's from the 1980s. That one 
I'll try to make that come home. It just kind of looks like his processing area. Back door, things would probably come back here and then get sorted through to the shop, but he was running out of room and things looked like they were piling up. I know the feeling. But you can't hang on to everything. You gotta clean house every once in a while. Otherwise you end up with a store full of stuff that you can't sell. And that's no good. This looks like the music room. Well, there's a ton of guitars in here. These are all kind of, uh, for the most part, entry level, but there's a lot of guitars. Little Fender amp. Look at all these crates are packed full of stuff too. Corningware, see right there? Corning and Pyrex, that's actually pretty collectible. If I did deal in glassware, I'd probably buy Corningware, so there's always somebody looking for it. If I don't buy it in this video, people will probably complain, but I can't buy everything. But there's a Grateful Dead concert poster. These are probably reprints, I'm gonna guess, but they're still cool. So I'm going to bring them and put them aside. Because somebody will think that's neat for their rec room. Oh, there's an old Pacific 66 power yacht. It's from a gas station and marine accessory set. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Bugs Bunny is a Mountie. Don't do a lot of plush, but that's kind of neat. There's some Tonka. What's left of a little Nylant toy there. He's been taken over by the Abominable Snowman. I guess if he really worked out, he'd be the Abdominal Snowman, but either way. Oh, look, there's some cans. Uh, tobacco. And what you're looking for with old cans, they're really kind of interesting labels. You know, these really aren't worth a whole lot. But if you get you know, a good Forest and Stream or Pocket Tin, they can be worth some money, but. Oh, interesting. Okay, here's something cool. That's a Husky service station cap, probably 1950s or so. That is definitely a piece I'm interested in. Got some old typewriters down here. That looks like an earlier one in that case. Let's see if we can clear the stuff out of the way and get to it. Let's see. It's a nice early Remington Rand, a little portable. Cool thing. Okay, we've got a cast iron pot and underneath it is an old BA grease pail. Bunch of songs collectors for it. Here's a stack of license plates too. Alaska. Oh, I see these are novelty plates. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get this pail out of here. Good piece of garage art right there. This is crazy, guys. I get to be the first one in here, and there's all kinds of stuff all over the place. You know, there are signs and hidden uh, treasures. At first glance, like I said, it looked like it was going to be more kind of like a pawn shop, but when you start digging, there's a few gems all over the place. So I'm gonna keep digging and see what I can find. So far, I'm pretty happy with uh, what we're coming up with. Hey, well, I can't pass up a little bucket of Lego. People buy it. Sometimes you can even reassemble whatever set that was in there and sell it. That's my pile so far. Starting to pile up on me. There's even kind of little hidden rooms. What's this? Costumes. Oh, this might have been a bathroom at one point. A peek around the corner. Boxes of stuff. Yep, sure enough. It was a bathroom. Oh, still, still have the water turned on. This 
this is kind of neat. That's a folk art piece. Somebody made a big, um, a big caterpillar here and it's massive. It's like four feet long. That is something I would like at the shop. You know, it's crude, but that's folk art. It's one of a kind. Somebody spent some time to make it. And these things always sort of sell at the store. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's just giant, but it's so cool. So I'm going to bring this up to the front too. Cab over, probably Ertl. Yep, it's an Ertl cab over. And of course the Ninja Turtles pizza throwing van, which I think was meant to be like a Volkswagen van. Doesn't look like it's all there though, but if the price is right, I might come back for that one. This is bag, a cool drink on a hot day, Pioneer brand, South African water bag. Hmm. It's kind of a neat graphic on there. Well, I'll add it to the pile. There's some chaps. They look like they're a kid's size. Not super big. If I can find some adult chaps or some woolies, that would be good. An old saddle. And he must have been buying stuff at auctions too to fill the shop because you don't end up with this much stuff unless you really work at it. This probably would have taken him a while to put together. Looks like this is the Star Wars corner over here. Maybe there's some vintage Star Wars mixed in. Some of these are more, you know, 1990s or 2000s. You can look at the base of the foot usually and tell what age it is. It's not Kenner, so I'm going to go ahead and say with it being Hasbro, it's probably from the 2000s or so. Firefighter's helmet, the Lucky 13 on the front. There's no way you'd get 220 bucks for that. They said ignore the pricing. I mean, there's probably a reason why a lot of this stuff is still here. Sometimes you have to wait until the uh, prior person is gone or ready to sell before you can get uh, the proper price on things. More cameras. I don't usually buy dolls, but that's the Campbell Soup Girl because she's kind of classified as advertising. I will try and pick this one up too. You know, I have no idea what we're going to come up with for a price, but I'm just going to keep putting stuff in a pile and hope that we can come up with something. Okay, I'm going to move upstairs now. There's some indigenous art. I think that's, that is, I believe, Vaseline wear. That would glow under black light. That's kind of an interesting piece. I do have collectors for that. I just said a few minutes ago, I don't buy glassware, but I do buy Vaseline wear. That, that stuff, you put a black light over it and it glows. My boyfriend has a beetle haircut. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Some nice indigenous dresses. Let's see what we can find in the upstairs. Room number one, more or less empty. Some mid-century furniture stacked up. The room's pretty well empty, but there's like this little pyramid stack all along the wall for no apparent reason. I can only assume someone was trying to climb into the ceiling um, or this room was much fuller and they've been emptying it out. Don't see anything jumping out at me there. Let's keep going. Hmm, that's disturbing. Nothing like a mannequin head on a torso to give you a nice howdy do. If somebody ever came in here late at night and didn't know that was there, that'd wake you up. Whole bunch of giant Anna and Elsa dolls. New kids on the block pillow. <laughs> oh, that's just dumb enough. I might buy it. <laughs> mm, all right. Legion uniforms. Actually, that looks like an old uniform. There might be some military stuff up here. I'm gonna do some searching. Look, these hallways are all dark. It's kind of eerie up here. Maybe I can find a light switch. The rooms have lights on. Some of the rooms are still set up like they were for a bunkhouse. Oh yeah, look. Wayne Gretzky, Campbell's soup cardboard stand up. 
Somebody would probably buy that, so I should probably add that to my pile too. I wonder what the other one is. Kind of walked right past that. That is a Victorian style carriage, but it's not actually old. It's just in the style of an antique carriage. Still, if I can get it for a decent price, we'll see. There's always something. I always gotta follow up on these leads. Okay, this is the room I was just in. Maybe there's some other signs back here. Some artwork, lots of art. Photographs and pictures. Kind of an interesting piece, very colorful. Every door has a bagged uniform on it. Look, there's another one there too. Hmm, I'm guessing there was some firearms around here at one point. Those appear to be empty. Old flower sacks. It's a nice hand tooled gun case. Leather, of course. Oh, there's some more chaps right here. Man, they're small. That one's a little bit bigger. Are those, what's this? Oh, that's a really old buffalo hide jacket, is what that is. That was popular in Victorian sort of era. That's pretty cool. Look at the nice beadwork on that. Sort of carrying your baby around on your back. There's another one here. Don't know how old they are. This one might be a little bit older, judging by the age of the wood. I'll have to ask if they're selling some of these artifacts too. Comes complete with baby, instant family. You gotta get to these places fast because that starts to happen. Once your roof lets go, well, then it's not long before the building starts to go. So it's a good thing I came when I did, because this place might be close to uh, another year or two and there might not be too much left. Another uniform. What are these anyway? I think the last one was RCAF. As you can tell from the buttons. Edmonton Police. Okay, that's an Edmonton Police jacket. Formal. Hunting gear. Nice big yard. Look at the size of the yard they have. Hmm. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, that's another staircase. Vase. That's a bayonet. That's a US uh, K-Bar. I wonder if that's, no, oh, this case is locked. I'll have to see if they have the case or the key for the case. Military stuff and randomly Skeletor. <laughs> you got military collectibles and then Skeletor in the mix and a Chewbacca. Why not, right? German stuff. There's an old uh, powder horn. in this door. Again, more beds and randomly more uniforms. That's just a, uh, that's a Navy style pea coat. Actually, that's kind of a nice jacket. Hmm. Another Royal Canadian Air Force. Boy, there's uniforms everywhere. What's behind door number 10? Oh, okay. Well, there's enough uh, German, Dutch, British. There's enough pants. There's enough military stuff here to probably clothe the whole army or start your own surplus store. And uh, if you guys saw a few videos ago, I bought a whole um, inventory of this kind of stuff and I sold it, you know, but these sorts of things don't bring a whole lot of money unless they're World War II. That's kind of a cool one though. That's a Snowbirds Canadian... Uh, jumpsuit right there okay that's a fighter pilot outfit i'm gonna have to
put that one aside. Maybe there's a few cool ones in here. Pilot jacket. If it has patches on it, they're cool. Okay. Well, that's one neat one. Black regiment. That was German. East German. Ooh. Well, at least the lights are working in this room. Just a few toy tanks and play sets in here. Where's the room full of red line Hot Wheels? That's what I want to know. Oh, there are lots of toy cars, actually. There are Hot Wheels in there. I might have to do a little digging in this room. I'm going to set this fighter pilot outfit down and see if I can get into some of these cases here. But look, it's, this is crazy, guys. There's stuff piled everywhere. I mean, there's so much in here that you can't even walk. So this is going to take a little bit of doing. Oh, look. Right on the top is an old model kit. Another one. Snap tight. Not as cool, but add it to the pile. We just keep adding to that pile. I'm going to uh, start to do a little digging here. The thing about a place like this is you know that you can't, you, I don't have enough time in the day to go through everything. And there is kind of a time limit. Not that the, uh, the owners haven't given me a time limit, but they might grow patient or maybe they've got other stuff they have to do. So I have to try and do as much picking as I can in the shortest amount of time possible um, so that we can get in and out, find a bunch of stuff, and then hope that we can maybe come back and make a deal on more later. But, um, you know, this is definitely an anomaly. You don't find this much stuff in one space. And when they sent me pictures, I had no idea what I was in for. Um, now that I'm here, <laughs> definitely glad I came. More military stuff. Air support, that's obviously not a real machine gun sitting there. It's a replica. But this feels like a little armament room in this area. That is a little miniature, I guess that's a battering ram. It's not, oh no, it's a, it's a cannon. Some of these things actually fire too. Paintball guns, airsoft guns, replicas of machine guns. It's a real gas mask, though. This is rooms everywhere. It's another one here. Guns of the 1885 Resistance. Whoa. Okay. There is. <laughs> there's some stuff. Oh my goodness. Well, that's cool. That's an 1890s tunic worn at the Battle of Cutknife Hill by the Governor General's Foot Guards. Wow. There might be some actually uh, cool historic artifacts hiding around here. Some of these tunics are quite old. Black watch outfit. You know, there's so much to look at. I wish I was more of a military expert. Luckily for me, a lot of this stuff is labeled. So it helps me when I'm trying to identify it. it saves a bit of time with research. Assuming that their research was right. But, you know, for the most part, modern uniforms. That's uh, Princess Patricia's PPCLI. Um, it's the early stuff that's more desirable. It's a Valley Forge Military Academy jacket right there. Chainmail. I'm sure he was quite the interesting character. Civil War reenactment hats. Some of this they said they did not want to sell. Ceremonial drums and headdresses. But they did say that they would sell this very ornate beaded uh, buffalo skull. That is just, well, I guess it's a bullhead is what it is, but it's really, really nicely done. And I think that's just a really great piece of art. So yes, <laughs> we'll grab this. At this point right now, what I'm doing is kind of the final pass through. You walk through once, you see what you have to see, and then you try and find all the things that you missed. And I'm sure that I probably missed some stuff along the way, because I mean, look at it. it. You thought my store was full. This place is, you know, 10 times more full than mine. But I'm trying to find those little nuggets, those little gems that are around. So let's uh, scour the walls and see if I missed anything. Okay, 
golf balls, some old soda cans. And I'm really just trying to find what I think is the best of the best, you know, the the stuff that really strikes my fancy. There's all kinds of cool stuff, like that original GE iron in the box. There's a ton of cool stuff, but this is the time where I have to be selective and try and find the best, the best stuff that I can find. Poly freeze pack. I can't even explain what it's like standing in here surrounded by all these hidden boxes. It would take months to go through everything individually just to see what there is all over the place. Because every shelf has something just a little different sitting on it. Okay, we struck a deal and thankfully just in time, the rain is slowly letting up here so everything's not gonna get soaked on the way to the car. The back of the ambulance is filling up nicely and it was definitely worth the trip. Before I head back into the city with my load of treasures from today, right across the street from me is an antique store. Go figure, there's an antique store right across the street from a place full of antiques and I'm the one that came to get it. But um, we're gonna check this place out and see what they got. I have to say the old record truck is pretty darn cool. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's when you take an old car and repurpose it into something else. What a neat piece to have. Okay, let's go inside. It's starting to rain again. Poor little bug. So you exit the main building, which is mainly China and antique furniture, and you come around and they've got this whole little town set up and every building is labeled. So we've got the China cabinet, which you can guess doesn't take you to China, but it does take you to a little building full of glassware and dishes. I'm interested to see what's inside the man cave. Whoa, so let's see what's inside the man cave. Mm, maybe I can find something cool in here. I'm looking, of course, for things that I think are cool for the shop and maybe for me. Old toys, oil cans, you know, cool stuff, right? That's kind of neat, actually, isn't it? It's a bronze lion statue. And the price is quite fair. It's a couple hundred dollars for an actual bronze. It's not bad at all. Nice marble base. That's kind of a cool piece. Yeah, we're going to have to have a good look around here and see what there is to see. This looks like a real concert poster. It's... The Lethbridge Henderson Lake featuring Bobby Cotola. Fortune teller, won't you say? Good old Bobby Cotola. Oh, some. That's kind of neat. All sorts of other odds and sods. Toyland. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a bunch of dolls. I'm gonna do a little quick walkabout. But their prices are fair, but their prices are also... So I think for me, I best leave the value of the dolls to those that are end user consumers, where I'm somebody who's looking for wholesale. Okay, but wait, <laughs> walking out the door, I thought I'd have another look at something and I did end up buying something here. I bought the tow truck, you know, because when are you going to find a 1920s Essex that's been converted into an old wrecker? That's what I'm going to replace and put in the front uh, yard where the other truck was. So there we go. I got an old truck and on top of it, even it runs too. Uh, it's a driver, if you can believe it. So uh, they're going to bring it to me in a couple weeks. <laughs> you never know what you're going to end up with when you start today. Sure didn't expect to find that. What did we get today? A mint in box G.I. Joe headquarters from the 1980s. A Husky service station cap, a BA can, a Pacific 66 power yacht, a tin plate Japanese diesel Santa Fe train, some old model kits in the boxes. We got the Campbell Soup Girl, uh, an old bank, some other model kits, the new kids on the block pillow, because why not? I uh, got this massive four foot long caterpillar that uh, was handmade out of wood and actually Look at this, it even works too. How cool is that? There was a British Bobby's hat, the beautiful artistically made beaded skull. And that is quite the work of art. And I think that might be one of my favorite pieces is look at the detail, look at the craftsmanship in that. That's just, that's just a knockout. There were a couple um, cremated hammers, 
That one has a beautiful beaded shaft and very nice work. A couple of vintage cameras, because why not? This was kind of an oddball. That isn't just a Coke bottle. It's a Coke umbrella. Now, I hadn't seen one of those before, but novelty Coke bottles are pretty cool. So figured pick that up. And of course, got the Wayne Gretzky Campbell's great one. <laughs> Look at him, he's so happy. Look at how much soup you bought, Wayne. You're gonna be like sluggish on the ice rolling around with all that soup inside of you. Uh, and then of course we got the Measure Yourself next to Wayne Gretzky. And I think that was a seven up promotion back in the day. Plus, if that wasn't enough, if that doesn't seem like enough, there was the two guitars, the Epiphone Les Paul and the uh, Jackson, which I thought, why not? Plus the Stratocaster, which has never seemed to have been out of the box. It's a Squire, not the greatest, but you know, it's still a Fender or still a, a Fender Stratocaster. It's just made by Squire, so a little lesser, but still cool. And we have the typewriter. Boy, this is all kinds of stuff. One thing I didn't show you guys when we were there was this. This is an 1800s ceremonial, and I think it was Knights Templar. Is there's the, I've had this before, and I believe it was a Templar outfit from the 1800s, but I, I've only had the hat. I never had the whole outfit before. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You know, somebody went to their meetings and had to wear that dressed all up. And then, of course, I couldn't leave it behind. Uh, this was the tunic worn at the Battle of Cutknife Hill. a neat piece of really Canadian history and yes it's dirty but you know what do you expect when you go back to an 1800s uniform like that and uh I mean remarkable that it, you know found it in that uh, room you never know what you're gonna find of course the 1900s made uh buffalo jacket and it comes from Edmonton Alberta it's from my hometown so some pretty cool stuff today I hope you guys like our adventures and I really appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to get back home before I spend any more money here because this is starting to get out of hand. Tow truck should be coming back to the shop in about a week or two and uh, I've got to go offload all the cool stuff that I bought today. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.